Thank you for joining our virtual museum day here at the Wertheim National Wildlife Refuge Complex. Today I will be showing you some of our great interactive displays we have on site. Now although our visitor services centers are currently closed to the public, we hope to reopen soon and welcome everybody back to experience these displays in person. Look through our Pine Barrens Habitat display. Can anyone spot a turtle? If so, excellent work. If not, that's okay also. They are hard to find with such adaptations. Here is the Eastern Box Turtle. Eastern Box Turtles are one of the most commonly seen turtles in the wild. These turtles are omnivorous and will eat almost anything, including berries, insects, roots, flowers, eggs, and amphibians. Box turtles also have an effective technique for defense. When threatened, they will pull all of their limbs into their shell and close it shut. Very few predators can prey upon an adult box turtle because of this adaptation. Did anyone happen to see a tiny frog on a leaf? No? Well, here we have a spring peeper. The spring peeper is found in wooded areas and grassy lowlands near ponds and swamps in the central and eastern parts of Canada and the United States. These tiny well camouflage amphibians are rarely seen but heard often. The brook trout prefers small streams and ponds with sandy or gravel filled bottoms with vegetation. Brook trout are a migratory species. Some of these fish spend their entire lives in freshwater, and others called salters are born in freshwater and then migrate to the ocean for their adult lives and will return to freshwater to reproduce. Starflower is one of the more common spring wildflowers in eastern North America, occurring in both deciduous and coniferous forests. This plant is a favorite amongst bees and it continues to grow from slender creeping rhizomes after being pollinated. Here we have our salt marsh habitat display. Can you see the osprey guarding her nest? Osprey make their nests on poles, in trees, and on platforms usually close to a body of water. Their diet consists mostly of fish. Often you can see them plunge feet first into the water to catch fish with their talons. Osprey are migratory birds, which means they travel to coastlines such as Long Island when the warmer weather approaches. Belted kingfishers spend much of their time perched along the edges of streams, lakes, and estuaries searching for small fish. They hunt either by plunging directly from a perch or by hovering over the water, billed downward before diving after a fish they've spotted. Kingfishers spend winters in areas where the water doesn't freeze so that they have continual access to their aquatic foods. Does everybody see this pink flower here? This plant is called a swamp rose mallow. They attract bumblebees and hummingbirds. This somewhat woody plant can grow up to six feet or more. The clapper rail, as you can see here, is a secretive bird that lives most of its life concealed in dense vegetation. They can be found in salt marshes and mangrove swamps. Did you know that the clapper rail has special salt glands that enable them to drink seawater? Atlantic silversides are an important food source for many species we would find in our local bays and oceans. They eat tiny crustaceans, insects, and fish eggs. Rainwater killifish are high tolerant fish that can tolerate changes in salinity. It feeds on saltwater mosquito larvae laid on the surface of the water. The sheep's head minnow sports a deeper and stouter body than the others within the tank. They are nicknamed as the mighty minnow because of their high level aggression towards bigger fish. Mummy chogs are a more slender local fish with distinguishable stripes. These fish are excellent at mosquito control as well. Next we have our grassland display. Can anyone find a mammal within this display? Maybe something with fur? Well here we see a red fox. One of the most noticeable characteristics of the red fox is the fluffy white tipped tail. 
Red foxes like open areas in woodlands, rural, and suburban neighborhoods, wetlands, and also brushy fields. Red foxes have excellent hearing. They can hear low frequency sounds and rodents digging underground. Does anybody see the black snake hiding within the grassland display? That is called the Northern Black Racer. The Northern Black Racer are terrestrial and are found in open grassy areas. This species of snake is diurnal, which means they come out during the day and sleep at night. Snakes are carnivores and are predators. Does anyone know what a predator is? This means that they eat other animals such as insects, reptiles, amphibians, birds, and mammals. Did you know that female northern black racers can lay up to 36 eggs in early summer? This unique plant seen here is called the prickly pear. The prickly pear is a cacti that grows on Long Island. You can find the species of cacti in warm, drier habitats such as our local grasslands. The prickly pear blooms between June and July and their fruit is edible. Fruit colors can vary in shades of red, green, and yellow or orange. This tiny mammal is called a meadow vole. They are one of the most common small mammals in North America. Primarily terrestrial and active all year, meadow voles can swim. They are more active during the day in habitats with dense cover and at night when temperatures are high. This is our beach display. Beaches are an important habitat to many species, in particular the piping plover. Now these tiny shorebirds are federally endangered and need our help and protection. You can find the piping plover on Long Island between the months of late March and early September. These months are crucial for breeding purposes. They nest solely on our beaches and lay their eggs in a tiny hole they dig in the sand. Their eggs can range from one to four and are tan with black spots for camouflage. The purpose for this camouflage is to hide their precious eggs from any predators such as red foxes, raccoons, and even seagulls. Cord grass is an important plant to have on our beaches. These grasses help keep dunes together as well as the soil underneath. Cord grass is also important to the animals that live on the beach because it gives them some place to hide from predators. I hope you learned a lot about our local habitats we have here on Long Island. Please come visit our refuges when we reopen and experience all of our interactive displays for yourself.